Hello and welcome to Garage Rock the Podcast. This is another one of our mini ep isodes. Ep isode number three, I believe. Number four, Cam. Number four. Yeah. Far out. This is crazy. We're mm. we're finally on the edge of getting out of lockdown here, Steve. Yeah. We're still doing this over the phone and still doing the mini episodes, but we're, we're getting close. Yeah, it doesn't count to our 50th episode, no. all right? So don't no. count it. No. You could claim that you're counting it, but we've decided that we're going to stop the counting. Yep. No more counting is going to be happening. Uh, we're going to go to the Supreme Court and make sure that no more counting <laughs> will take place. Just like Rove McManus says, it's like... You know, when you're running a race and you're winning and you're like, mm, let's make the finish line here so I win now because yeah. I don't want to do any more. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Fair enough. But uh, how are things with you, man? Pretty good. I've been, I've been enjoying the um, election over in uh, yep. America. Mm-hmm. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody? This is This is world news, Steve, and it's, it's plastered all over the news and the True. papers and everything. And um, I wonder if they'll ever do this for Australia. <laughs> Fuck, I hope not. Um, I I have been I have been getting into it actually. Just I had the rolling um, feed going uh, while I was uh, working the other day. But I mean, we're recording this on Thursday afternoon, so not sure about what will happen by the time this goes up. But currently, as things stand, America is fucked. <laughs> we already knew that. It's just. It's becoming more and more apparent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how things unfold in the next few weeks. But, well, well, just I'm, I'm just going to claim victory. Why the fuck not? You know, just do it. That's it. We're, we're just biding our time, aren't we, really? <laughs> oh, God. See who comes up trumps. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what an exciting week it's been in football. But yes. not football. Yeah. Well, it has been football. We've had the AFL and NRL Grand Finals. Yeah, well, I mean, there was a few weeks ago, actually. We, we have been a bit lapsed in doing our um, in doing our episodes. Yeah, not much has been happening in music, so that's why we're doing it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we are going to talk about the AFL and NRL Grand Final Entertainment. We had the AFL one first. We had uh, Cub Sport, Wolf Mother. Well, not, not Wolf Mother. It was Andrew Stockdale from Wolf Mother, and he played a Wolf Mother song. So I don't know why we couldn't yeah, just be Wolf Mother. I know. Why, what happened to the rest of the band? Are they gone bye-byes? Oh, or like, there was only three of them to begin with. He goes through band members quite quickly from what I've from what I've understood. Oh, okay. I'm sure it's not his problem. Though. No, definitely not. It's everyone else's problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also we had Shepherd at halftime. Um, now this, of course, being the first ever night grand final. And so we had the halftime entertainment, which was Shepherd singing, you know, Geronimo and just – Lighting up the the ground with different coloured balls didn't really do much for me. If I'm I'm going to be honest, um, yeah. And and look, even DMAs and they played Believe, which you know you've said it's like one of your favourite covers. Oh, I love that cover, but yes, doesn't really get me pumped for an AFL Grand Final. Agreed. But you know what? It's uh, there was a lot of hate about the the whole uh, entertainment. Mm. for the AFL Grand Final online because a lot of people were asking for Meatloaf to come back. <laughs> you, would, you know that uh, things aren't going too well when people want Meatloaf back. <laughs> that's, that's weird. But, yeah, look, it, it's been a weird year mm. and obviously it didn't even look like there was going to be a Grand Final this true, year. True, true. A few times through the year. But um, it, it happened, so they pulled it together and we're very lucky to have it. It was something good to watch anyway and... Um, mm enjoyable but the the next night was the nrl grand final yep, steve yep and geez i got a bit excited didn't i oh, of course you did because i knew amy shark was playing and i do like amy shark mm-hmm. and she's as i mentioned in our last episode she's um brought out a song with travis barker yep come on yeah she played come on and before she played it she said she threw to her friend travis barker and he did a little um hello australia and and play drums in the background via video, of mm-hmm. course, since he's over in America. Yep. But, um, yeah, I've got a bit of excitement happening there, Steve. Bit of a chub. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what a legend. Like, I know he, um, he literally is collaborating with everyone. Like, mm. I'm pretty sure he's bringing out a, a song soon with my sock drawer tomorrow <laughs> or something like that. So, yeah, but good on him, getting his name out there. Yeah, Keeping no. his name out there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's uh, he is doing a lot of things with everyone at the moment. Um, I know it's like Machine Gun Kelly, someone else he's been uh, working with a lot, and he's just released his album. Not that I really give a shit, but um, and it, it's it's a lot of different genres as well. It's not, it's not just rock. You've got like pop, like Amy Shark, and he's been doing hip hop stuff for years yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh no, that's it. Like he dips his finger in a lot of toes. Like even when they. What did I say? You said he dips his finger in a lot of toes. <laughs> we, we can just tell your mum that we ate the pie. Uh, <laughs> well done. Anyway, Steve, yeah, that was a bit of excitement for us anyway. Yeah, I like Amy Shark. She's she's cool, but and um, I'm not a massive fan, not as big as you, but she's cool. Um, she also did a performance of uh, Never Tear Us Apart by uh, In Excess with... Um, yeah, I was surprised by that. One of the good. Ferris brothers, I think it was Andrew Ferris, jumped up and, and, and played guitar as well and sung a bit. But, I mean, it, that was one artist who, yeah, had two um, additional people join her, uh, one on stage and one on the screen. Um, as opposed to the AFL who just had heaps of different artists who did like one song each or maybe two songs. Um, the NRL, yeah, one, NRL one as far as entertainment goes. Oh, totally. And and not to mention the mighty Melbourne Storm has actually mm. won. So yep. that, that, that was just a beautiful end to the weekend that was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but now there's no more finals to be played. There's no more sport. We've got nothing to be looking forward to at all, Cam. <laughs> Not true, Steve, because we are finally coming out of lockdown here. So true. Hopefully, in the in the coming weeks and months, we'll start learning uh, maybe a new way of seeing a little bit of live music. Mm-hmm. I, I know it's going to take a while, but we'll see what happens. I know um, Jay and Lindsay McDougall from Friends of Rome are playing acoustic shows together up in Sydney. Cool. So. Maybe we can see something like that coming through. I, 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 don't, I don't know, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? True, true. Well, um, someone that I interviewed last week has announced that she's going to be playing uh, some acoustic shows uh, in Brisbane. That is, of course, Kate miller Heidke, who I had a chat with on the show last week, week before. And, uh, yeah, she was lovely. So that was that was great. Listen to that if you haven't had a listen. Check out the interview. Yeah, what a doll. What an absolute doll. Yeah, check out the interview. came out on the 30th. It was very exclusive, wasn't it, Steve? Because you actually uh, recorded the interview and, and it wasn't allowed to come out until the 30th. Yeah, I don't know about exclusive. It was more just just... Hold on to this. You know, we recorded. Steve, that's ex- that's exclusive, mate. Yeah, that's for us, embargoed. Anyway. <laughs> we'll go. Yeah, yeah. For for us, that's pretty big. In fact, I've got another one. I'm actually recording an interview tomorrow, and that can't come out until the twentieth because to coincide with another album release. So, yeah, keep an eye out for another one there. You heard it first. A little bit of a teaser about yeah. nothing you have any idea about. Yes, it's something for you to listen out for. <laughs> Cryptic enough, Love cryptic, you. Uh, it's, yeah, not cryptic yeah. enough perhaps. Um, but Steve, yeah. what about, uh, did you hear about Festival Hall? Festival Hall, yes. Jesus Christ, I heard about Festival Hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord, Praise Stephen. be, yeah. What, what the bloody hell is happening with Festival Hall? Festival Hall has been bought by Jesus, uh, which is, you know, pretty on brand. Uh, he likes to buy a lot of things. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, it, it's, it's been bought by the Hillsong Church uh, of Australia, of course, the, the musical church, Hillsong, which are worth a shitload of money. Um, and I don't know if they're actually paying tax on the purchase of Festival Hall. Probably not, the bloody scammers. Exactly. Let, let's, make, let's make this Garrard Rock uh, religious so we don't have to pay any tax. We don't anyway, Cam. Oh, I suppose you've got to make money to pay tax, don't you? <laughs> True. <laughs> we have had a couple of people say, I hear you've got ads now. We we have had a couple of ads on our podcast pre-roll. But, yeah, I think so far we've we've made a total of $1.63. So, Your share. Yeah, there we go. Rolling in it. But yeah, so they've they've bought the, the Hillsong Church and they're going to be totally redeveloping it and it looks very white. It does, Steve. Like, imagine, can you imagine any artist or <laughs> like you and I have been there. Like, hmm. we, we've seen Grinspoon there. It gets pretty messy. Like, yep. Though, if everything's white, it's not going to stay white for very long <laughs> unless unless they have some sort of covering or something they're going to put over it. I mean, yeah. I did hear that. I know it's going to be a religious place, but they still want it to be nicknamed Festy Hall because, but for other reasons now. Yes, it's always been Festy Hall because it is quite a festy 
venue, not festive, but festive venue. My parents went to see uh, Sammy Davis Jr. play at Festival Hall in, in the 70s. Wow. And he was up on stage and it started raining outside and someone handed him an umbrella because it was <laughs> dripping onto the stage uh, <laughs> while he was singing. And I don't think any repairs have been done since then either. So it's uh, it's always, it's been, it's a rundown shithole, but uh, now, now it's God's problem. Steve, the Beatles played there. They'd be turning yep. in their grave if they knew this. Yeah, true, or at least two of them. <laughs> Imagine no religion, Steve. Yeah, well, we can't anymore because that's that's what Festival Hall is now. It's it's ex- well, it's not exclusively religious. They have said that they are open to band. Like they they're going to have it on the Sunday. You know, that's their day. But any other day, you know, you can have you know Limp Biscuit. They'll just rock up there. They can still play a rock gig. Can you imagine Limp Biscuit playing on a Saturday night, <laughs> the night before Church Day? Yeah. Can you imagine? You know, where's Ballin with his um, white? bloody bum suit and <laughs> I suppose the white would fit in but there'd be True. like splotches of blood everywhere wouldn't they True, but you know uh, they're they're cool with that. I mean, I mean, Christ had to come out of the middle of his hand, didn't he? Bit of blood, that's all good. Ah, oh, true. The only bloke that can have a wank with his hand open. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, for, He's yeah. supposed to say, "Oh God, oh God." Uh, <laughs> But uh, the uh, the venue's going to be in the round now, so it's not going to be a stage at one end. So I don't even know how they're going to be able to have concerts there anymore. To be honest, I think Margaret Court Arena has kind of overtaken Festival Hall for gigs that would have previously been yeah. at Festival Hall seem to now be yeah. played at Margaret Court. So yeah, um, definitely. I, I don't think it's going to be used as a rock venue much longer. But hey, only time will tell. Actually, before we do go, Cam, uh, there is one other thing I, I want to uh, announce. Uh, the, the Foo Fighters look like they're teasing a new album. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard about this. You mentioned it uh, before we started. What's what's going on? Yes, so uh, this is uh, the 25th anniversary of Foo Fighters. They, uh, the debut album came out in 1995, and um, they've been sort of been doing some historical sort of stuff and retrospective stuff on their social media. They kind of have been doing like LP1, and then they've been doing some stuff about the first LP. Then they've been doing LP2 and yep. do a bit more stuff about the second album. Then today day of recording uh they just posted lp10 and they've only got nine albums so what's all this about and then it was a bit of a stomping and clicking sort of noise (laughs) with uh lp number 10 so it looks like we can expect the foo fighters 10th album to be announced very soon that's awesome see who said there's nothing to look forward to steve did Speaking of the Foo Fighters, have you seen that little spoof that they've done recently, Fresh Pots? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if whoever's listening, if you haven't seen it, do do yourself a favour. Yeah. Check out this video. It's, it looks like they've it looks like they've been making an album and they've got a bit bored maybe in the recording process Possibly. and so they've made this this little uh, offshoot, this little video that uh, my mate has uh, <laughs> sent me and it's it's freaking hilarious. I won't mean, I won't say it, but it's um, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, Fresh pots. it is off the back of um, Dave Grohl did have a severe coffee addiction. Oh, so that was legit. Okay. Yeah, no, it's it's legit. He almost he almost died. He went to hospital because his heart was just over pumping because he just had so much caffeine in his body. He, he yeah, he drinks a lot of coffee. Right. Yeah, so it's all it's all legit the 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 story in the um commercial they've made yeah, is based off a true story. Ah, oh, there you go. That makes more sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you see, I um I didn't start drinking coffee until I was roughly about 30, right? Yeah. And my mate from work got me into it because we work night shift and stuff and I'm like, "Oh, this is great. I can't believe I haven't drank it before and um after a couple of years i decided you know what it's really not doing any good for me because it was making me feel crook i you know like in in the guts so i was i was aware of that and then i noticed that it was making me very jittery Mm -hmm. yeah can do and i don't know if something changed because it was fine at the start and then after a while it was making me really jittery and so i I stopped and I haven't drank for about three years now. I haven't drank coffee for about three years and 
I feel great because a lot of people do go, no, I need a coffee. Mm. I need a coffee. Yeah. need to have a coffee in the morning. Yep. Maybe try it without it for a bit and it um, might be a bit healthier. And if not, balance it out. Having it all the time, like, like yeah. you said, Dave Grohl, like, it can be really bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. But on a side note now, how's your cocaine addiction going? Oh, he's better. He's better than coffee, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I um, I drink coffee quite a lot, and and you know, working in in office buildings, it's more of a social thing as well. Like, you know, people used to go and catch up for a smoke outside. Yeah. Um, less smokers now, but more coffee drinkers, perhaps. Who knows? Yeah. Um, one last final thing. Uh, this is fresh off the press as well. You don't even know about this. You don't know what's about to come out of my mouth, Cam. Steve, I am on the edge of my seat. Another iconic punk rock band the offspring have just released a new single and it is a christmas single it is a cover of christmas baby come home really it is and i had to listen to it because it it, no but the thing is (laughs) i had (laughs) i had to listen to it because they're they're priming for a a new album that they say the new album's recorded they're having a few yeah um yeah legal issues because the bass player uh, Greg K has Great. left the band so they're trying to sort all that shit out as well but the so record I'm has been guessing done. that it's not taken off that album I this is something that's been recorded in the, it's something that's been recorded in the meantime to give people a little bit of something to I, keep them going yeah I guess so in this 2020 world we need something good to look forward to and this isn't it but they've uh, <laughs> they've released it have a listen to it if, if you want. It's it's um, the Offspring Baby Come Home, and it almost sounds it almost sounds like there's a bit of auto tune in Dexter's voice. Oh man, the only bloke that has never ever needed it. I tell you what, yeah. when they did that quarantine song too, um, early early quarantine days. You remember that? Did they? Maybe oh. when they had had people dressed in like in the. I'm oh, pretty sure we spoke about yeah, it with yeah. the there was animal. Um, um, it was a cover. I can't remember what the cover was, but it was a cover. Yeah. Jeez, we're going well, aren't we? <laughs> Our memories are gone. Yeah, exactly. Well, I haven't felt mine for quite a while, uh, but should, I have been eating less. You uh, should probably get a mammogram, or at least perhaps me. <laughs> yeah, well, he is about to release his 10th studio album with the Foo Fighters. Um, yeah, me. <laughs> anyway. So fucking unfortunate. <laughs> that isn't his real name. You do know that. Really? That's not his real name, no. Oh. Pat Smear from um, Foo Fighters is not actually called, or well, his real name's not Pat Smear. On that revelation, um, and also Jesus uh, Jesus didn't buy Festival Hall, another revelation there too. Anyway, <laughs> whilst we're just breaking all of these exclusives, it's uh, time we should uh, probably head off. Um, don't forget, or do forget, and then remember to follow us on our socials. Uh, that is, of course, at Garage Rock Podcast on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And our email address, Cam? Yes, is Garage Rock Podcast at gmail.com mm, indeed and we've had a few bands sending us through music and hey thank you so much and we do love uh, hearing from you and we do love checking out the new music uh, we obviously aren't doing tracks at the moment during our mini episodes but as soon as we get back we'll be playing the music once again on our regular episodes which will be hopefully sooner rather than later yeah, well, I think it will be sooner rather than later, Steve. It's been a long stint, but hey, we've stuck in there. We've hung in there, haven't we, Steve? Absolutely. It's been a long time since a rock and roll. A long, lonely, 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 lonely time. <laughs> On that note, I think we might leave it, leave everyone to it to go live their lives in freedom within mm. 25 k's. Of course, of course. And that's the problem with uh, the two of us is we're about 30 k's apart now, so we still can't actually do the episode. But they're lifting that soon, so hopefully episode 50, just around the corner. I love it more than life itself. Oh, just like I love you. Anyway, it's been nice. Um, (laughs) We'll catch you again uh, sometime very soon, but until that time, I've been Steve. And I've been Cameroni Nose. Have yourself a pleasurable evening. (laughs) 